Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we'll call this uh, hearing or meeting to order. This is a hearing of the Resource Planning Committee. Uh, let's see, uh, this is, oh, here, I'm just really tired today. Okay, right, this is a hearing conducted by the Resource Planning Committee of the Door County Board of Supervisors. My name is Ken Fisher. I'm the chair of this committee and represent District 10, which is in the city of Sturgeon Bay. I'll have the other committee members introduce themselves. I'm Richard Verley. I represent District 15, which is the eastern half of Sebastopol from Highway 42 to all the way out to Lake Michigan. Uh, Dave Anagold, District 17, the village of Egg Harbor and portions of the town of Egg Harbor, town of Jacksonport, town of Bailey's Harbor. John Cook, I represent District 4, which is half the township of Gardner and half the township of Nassawapi. I'm Vinny Shomo for District 18, which is the town of Gibraltar and village of Ephraim. And this is Mariah Good, the uh, Land Use Services Department Director, and Sue Van Langenberg, Zoning Administrator, and they will serve as clerks this afternoon. The purpose of this hearing, or these hearings, is to gather testimony on the various cases on today's agenda. You are encouraged to explain how your interests are affected, how the public is affected, and to bring out any facts pertinent to the case related to public health, safety, convenience, and general welfare. There's uh, only one type of case on today's agenda, that's a zone, zoning amendment cases. For zoning amendment petition to amend either the map or the text of the county zoning ordinance, our committee conducts this hearing and makes a recommendation to the entire Door County Board of Supervisors to either approve the petition, <coughs> approve a modified version of the petition, or to deny the petition. The county board will make the final decision on the zoning amendment petitions. The procedure which we will use this afternoon in conducting these hearings is as follows. I'll read the legal notice and will then call on the clerk for an explanation of the case. Resource Planning Committee members will then report any background information they have. There will be two rounds of testimony from those of you in attendance. The applicant will go first, followed by others in favor. Those in opposition will speak second. Persons with only questions or concerns should speak as if they are in opposition. The second round is for a purpose of rebuttal. Only those who spoke in the first round may speak in rebuttal. Because of the need to prepare a clear record of your testimony, I ask that only one person come to the table at a time. If you want to testify, please come forward, state your name and address, and then present your testimony. Statements from the back of the room and exchanges between parties will not be allowed. Speakers presenting repetitive or irrelevant testimony will be excused from the table. Following this afternoon's hearing, the committee will adjourn and reconvene to its regular business meeting. You may observe those proceedings, but may not participate in them. Please take this opportunity to self silent cell phones, pagers, and <coughs> similar devices. I need to check mine again, but I thought I did. Uh, yep, yep, I'm good. All right. All right, Town of Claybanks. Chris Ren Renard, doing business as Rosewood Dairy Incorporated, petitions for an amendment to the detailed zoning map of the town of Claybanks to rezone 3.5 acres of the existing 38.56 acre parcel currently in the exclusive agricultural or EA zoning district as follows. 0.48 acres to be rezoned to commercial center, which will encompass the existing store and parking area along <coughs> County Highway S and 3.02 acres to be rezoned to Heartland 3.5, which will contain the existing cheese processing facility and warehouse buildings. The rezoning will make the existing uses, retail and cheese processing, conforming, which will allow for the expansion of the store, a land division to separate the 3.5 acre rezoned uh, areas from the farm parcel, and the sale of the remaining 35 acres of agricultural land. The parcel is located at 248 County S in Section 31, Town 26 North and Range 26 East. Okay, we can go to page 16 of the packet. Just want to give you a general location of the property uh, located in the southwest corner of the town of Claybanks. As you can see from the Sea of Brown, uh, that represents the exclusive egg zoning district, which is a 35 acre minimum lot size. And you can see we have the town of Forestville over to the west in the general egg yellow color here. Um, just to the north of this parcel um, is a small residential lot. Um, and the north of that is Winky's Farm Market. 
Um, and maybe at this point we can go to the air photo, Mariah. 14, 13, that's fine. Um, I don't know if you'll remember, but you also, also authorized not too many years ago a small non-farm residential lot across the street. It's still vacant at this point in time. We have a residential lot to the south, the creek, and then Kiwani County is just to the south as well. And as I said before, this is the town of Forestville where you'll see um, plenty of agriculture and small residential lots scattered throughout. Moving on, if we can go to page 17, <coughs> a copy or a portion of a copy of the survey. And what I wanted to point out is they did have the survey done. The entire lot is just over 38 acres, um, which is important. And then from there, I'd like to go to their site plan on page 19. Try to explain this in a little better detail. Um, what Rosewood Dairy would like to do is, a, is sell off 35 acres of egg land. In order to do that, they would need to have two 35 acre pieces, which obviously they don't. What they're trying to do is create one lot that's three and a half acres in size so they can sell the remnant 35 acre farm parcel. Now, what you'll see in the staff report is that uh, Rosewood Dairy Retail, the retail store right here, as well as the cheese processing factory, <coughs> which is located in this part of the building, and these are warehouses for the cheese processing factory, those have been there for many, many years. They predate zoning, essentially. Um, however, the property has been zoned exclusive egg this whole time, so existing uses. What they're proposing to do is rezone this portion of the proposed three and a half acre lot to the commercial center district, which would make this retail use conforming. And then the other portion of the parcel, they're looking to rezone that to Heartland three and a half. And that would make the cheese processing use a conforming use as well. Um, one of the reasons being, obviously, to make it conforming, but the other reason they want to do a small expansion within the existing building, um, which I believe is currently a storage room, they want to expand the retail into that. Um, as a non-conforming use, they would be limited um, in order to do that, so this would help with that future proposal. Um, other things that I want to touch base on, <coughs> originally when they did apply, they applied, and this is a note I have on page 23 of the staff report, they had originally applied for CC and light industrial, um, but both the town <coughs> and neighbors uh, were very concerned <coughs> with that light industrial zoning district um, as far as future possibilities. So that's why you're seeing today the commercial center and the Heartland 3.5. That was really the only other option for that cheese processing uh, facility. A um, couple other notes just to make. Um, at the time that they applied, and if we could go back to that site plan on 19. At the time that they had applied a few years back, these buildings, this, they're connected. Uh, were actually condominiumized, and I believe that was because um, the previous owner wanted, had two different people taking ownership of the two different businesses, and that was one way they could do that. Since the time of application, um, the owner has um, removed that condominium. So just to clarify, because um, there's a couple different parcel numbers in the beginning because of the condominium, I just wanted to clarify that this is, the condominium has been removed and this is all one parcel that is 38 plus acres. Um, what else can I cover here? Excuse me, you yes. shut that door, did you? No. No, it's open. Um, one other 
thing that I want to point out, within the Heartland 3.5 zoning district, there is a 25% impervious surface limitation. And it's hard to see on here, but the air photo would show that with the building, these buildings, and this is all parking lot right here, um, with all of that, we have a calculation in the packet showing that the impervious surface would be 26%. So they have worked with Bay Lake Landscape and have had Greg Colthurst review their stormwater plan, um, which works to make this area meet that 25%. So they'll be going through an impervious surface authorization to be in compliance with that impervious surface limitation. Um, and that is allowed by our ordinance. Um, after that, what I want to show you is starting on page 28, we included in our staff report and all of these, uh, the table of uses so that you can see this column right here are all the uses. If they have a P, it means permitted. If it's a C, it means a conditional use. If there's nothing in the box, that means that use is not allowed. For example, art galleries are not allowed in exclusive egg. Um, so this is orange, even though it doesn't really look like it. Exclusive egg is the current district, Heartland over here, Commercial Center over here. Um, to point to what they're proposing to make the two existing uses conforming, if we look on page 30, we will see retail uses. Oops, I'm to go. Sorry. One more page up, 30. Retail uses are not allowed in exclusive egg. Obviously, these are grandfathered uses. But moving over to the CC Commercial Center, it is a permitted use. And then cheese processing is in with fruit and vegetable processing, conditional use in exclusive egg, and not allowed in CC, but allowed in Heartland right here. Um, again, part of the reason to get it out of exclusive egg is so they can sell that farmland. Um, I believe that's all I have for you at this moment. I will turn it over. Oh, one more thing. Sorry. Almost forgot. So um, in exclusive egg, uh, Wisconsin Farmland Preservation Program. Um, that the state runs, but the county has to enforce those regulations. As part of rezoning out of exclusive egg, you, the Resource Planning Committee, need to determine that this rezoning will do all of the following, and then it's allowed to be rezoned. That the land is better suited for the use not allowed in the Farmland Preservation Zoning District. The rezoning is consistent with any applicable comprehensive plan. The rezoning is substantially consistent with the county certified farmland preservation plan and that the rezoning will not substantially impair or limit the current or future agricultural use of surrounding parcels of land that are zoned for or are legally restricted to agricultural use. So we need to keep in mind that in order to pull it out of the exclusive egg zoning district, that three and a half acres what is being proposed you need to make sure that it meets all the following. Now at this point, I'll turn it over to Mariah for the planning considerations. So on page, the bottom part of page 25 is where considerations that you look at when you're rezoning are um, listed off, just kind of the general questions and things like, was there a mistake made? Is it trying to accommodate things that have changed, et cetera? And in this case, as Sue has already done a good job of pointing out, these uses have been there forever. So I'm not really sure why along the way they've always been left as exclusive agriculture for that corner, but they have. Um, and if you go down onto page 26, it talks about the designation in the county comprehensive plan for this property. And it's rural slash agricultural, um, but as Sue already talked about, the, the uses that they're talking about removing from the agricultural district have already been there forever. They're still gonna have a farm parcel, 35 acre that meets requirements left over afterward. Um, so there, we really didn't have any concerns from a plan, comprehensive plan consideration about the proposal. That's all I have. Great, any questions? Okay. You're looking right at me. Oh, no, 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 I just happen to be looking in that direction. Sorry. Page 15, please. 15. Your yellow lines had me confused. 
Okay. Because it certainly didn't, you know, you go on a brown on a <coughs> map, it's a single lot, and this this one dividing the west side from the east side is doesn't line up with anything. Okay, so going back to my point when I was trying to clarify the condominium, previously there, right, it, it took off the western side of the manufacturing plant and zigzagged around reta the retail store. So this is a close-up. When, when I did the search to print this map, it pulled up the condominium. What used to oh, be Oh, that's the overlay of the condominium. Oh, oh, okay. And, yeah. and there was no way for me to pull it off without having this highlighted and this highlighted separately. Because I, even though I knew there was a condominium that was in the pack and that stuff, the way I was reading the condominium was separating the top building from the southern building. And, and that clearly wasn't doing that here. Right. Right. And it really did that, but then this was outlined for some reason as well. But all that okay. condominium, it was an overlay. It's been removed, and okay. they have copies in the packet. But that's all that is at the date that I printed all these documents. Okay. It's still there. Uh, and then the second question is, right now they will be exceeding the 25% of previous service ratio. Um, there has been a plan reviewed for a way to uh, bring it in compliance with some modifications. Mm -hmm. Um, but if I read that correctly, then they essentially couldn't add any more buildings or, you know, how would, could they accomplish getting around that aspect? Right. So if there were to be any expansion of anything impervious surface, whether it's driveway or building, um, and they would have to do additional impervious surface um, mitigation. Or whatever. Okay. Yeah, kind of like a mitigation. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Right now, the swales will account for the Food. extra 1% <laughs> in this case. that they're over in this case, and it might actually account for more than that. I'll have to look a little more closely, okay. but right before anything could be added, we'd have to authorize that. So there is a way to continue expansion on the property relative to the impervious so surface ratio. So oftentimes we talk it. about rain gardens, yep. stormwater ponds, things like that. One other thing to keep in mind is that we have many, many parcels in the county that have two zoning districts. In, in the same parcel, which is what eventually will presumably result here. And the way that we handle that is that whatever you're doing in District A has to meet all the requirements of District A, and whatever you're doing in District B has to meet all the requirements of District B. So that impervious surface ratio allowance in the part that would be zoned commercial will still be, what, 75%? Right. That 75 is the, so the max, but it's below that, so that one works. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay, any other questions? Quit. Just with the 75% zoned commercial, is it then the, on page 19, is it the sort of L-shaped that makes the 0.48 acres? Right. And right then here. that, so that already doesn't have 75% impervious surface? Right. The way the okay. regulations are written, yeah. we can't include the right of way in that calculation, but it does Perfect. meet that. Okay. And then that's kind of where they're looking for expansion anyway. So they would and, be, and the expansion yeah. that they're proposing is within the existing building. Okay. Um, it's uh, converting a storage area to mm -hmm. retail. Okay. So it would be expanding the footprint of the building at this point. Um, but that's a good question. Thanks. Okay. Anything else? If not, would the applicant please come forward? <coughs> mm -hmm. Come sit down. Chris Renard, home address is S2130, Highway 42, Sturgeon Bay, Wisconsin. Okay, now you tell us what you're planning. I'm planning to do is, as Sue had said, divide the lot off. So we have 35 acres that stays with Clay Banks guidelines for the 35 um, exclusive ag, which it will. And then the other three and a half acres, which will be Heartland 3.5 and the commercial center, will do exactly what the business is doing right now in those spots. Um, the commercial will be for the store. Um, we'd like to add in there, eventually um, put in a deli or add on to that store, make it similar to the one on Highway 57 or just off 57. And then the factory will stay the same as it is right now. That, there's no um, plans for expansion on that building. That's going to stay doing what it is doing. And then we have warehouse space, which is in back. Okay. Any questions of the applicant? Anybody? No? 
Okay, thank you. Cool. Anybody else wishing to speak in favor? Anybody else wishing to speak in favor? Anybody else wishing to speak in favor? We had just the one letter uh, in no, favor? No new oh, letters. There's no letter on that one. No new letters. No new letters. No new letters. That letter was, I believe, put in the opposition because the town had a concern with the previous. Is that where it was put? Yes. I think so. But then it got changed to... Yeah, the, the, as Sue already explained, the town and the neighbors were concerned when it was right. the all-light industrial, but now they changed the... Okay, so now they're, they're okay with it. Well, let me just clarify. So there's no letters in favor okay. in the packet. Right. The only letter in the packet is in the opposition. Oh, okay. That's the town's letter. Yeah, yeah. Okay. okay, so I just wanted to clarify okay. that. And we have no is, additional letters. Is there anybody wishing to speak against the proposal? Good afternoon. My name is yeah. Sigrid Slobby, my husband Dave. We're at 250 County S and our address is Algoma. Neighbors to the north of the Rosewood Dairy corner of County S and Rosewood Road. Our main concern isn't so much the zoning change from exclusive egg to heritage as much as what are the future plans of the business, expansion, etc. If there happens to be expansion, we are having an issue already with noise that is currently there. Um, we have spoken to the neighbors to be respectful as to our, that is our home. We're, we're probably the only neighbor that's directly affected by this. Um, and we have asked them, they have to pump out wastewater, which I understand, you know, it's a business thing, but we've asked them to please not do it before 6 a.m. or after 9 p.m. And there's the tractor is there by at least 5, 5.30 in the morning. And when this pump goes on, we're awake. <laughs> and, you know, we just, it's just not acceptable. Um, we fully realize this is a working cheese factory business. Um, and all times of the day, other than that, there is minimal noise. I was out at yesterday morning at 4.30. I didn't hear any noise. <laughs> Just happened to be up at that time of the day because I had to go somewhere. But other than that, it's just we have an issue with this pumping of their wastewater. If the zoning is changed, again, what is the future plans for their business, expansion, the continual noise, more truck, truck traffic, and will this affect, if anything, if it comes out of exclusive egg, will that affect our um, property value in any way? That's about all I got. Thank you very much for your time. Any, that was, any questions? Oh. No? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Anybody else wishing to speak against the proposal? Anybody else wishing to speak against the proposal? And anybody else wishing to speak against? Okay. Uh, and now this was the only okay. Okay. Would you like to speak in rebuttal to what she had to say or address concerns she had? Sure. You then you come up here. <coughs> you should say your name and address again. Chris Renard. Uh, S2130, State Highway 42, Sturgeon Bay, Wisconsin. Okay. Um, the business we're running right now with our wastewater is we do have a tractor that hauls it. So they come in at 5 in the morning to be off the road before the traffic on Coney S starts getting real crazy. That's one of the reasons they're there. And he's also a farmer. So for him to be on his field and doing his work and his other job, that's one of the reasons he's there at 5 a.m. And he hauls out right away and then he's done for the day at Rosewood. Uh, expansion wise as you've seen there's no expansion for the factory that's no plans on that future right now it's just the retail end so truck traffic would stay the same in the area unless there's a little growth in business but that would be about it okay. just at least picking up okay any questions on that go ahead, go ahead dude. No, no. how long has, you, has that practice been as far as the wastewater pumping uh, almost two years two years and before that, it was just a condominium? Before that, we used to have a um, pond system that was set up. And then 
the DNR wanted us to change that system, and then we land spread. That's why we have the we pump the water out. Okay. Uh, so effectively, your pond system was the equivalent of an on-site waste disposal yep. system that was Correct. approved for many, 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 many years, right. and the DNR change caused this. Um, then my question is relative to that is. Um, there's plenty of pumping systems out there. Why is it so noisy if it's working up the neighbors that far away? Um, it's just the pump that's on the tank that we have. So it's run off so a tractor. It's off a tractor. It's off the PTO okay. of the tractor. So the tractor RPM is going yeah. up. And that's what the it's the volume is from, yeah. Okay. Just I've been around plenty yeah. of pumps, and there's plenty of ways to make pumps quieter. Yeah. It's just the PTO on the but tractor. But it's the PTO and the RPMs of the tractor going up. Right. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions, concerns? Uh, Go ahead. I have one just in the thought of expanding retail. Do you kind of have an idea of like what your goal is with expansion and how many people come now versus how many maybe would come with the expansion? Might be hard to answer, but just kind of hard to answer. But projecting. what we would like to do is kind of make both um, retail outlets similar. Like we have a deli in one, we don't have the deli in the other. And that's one of the questions we get asked when people come in oh, can we get a fresh pizza here? No, so we have frozen, we don't have a deli, that kind of thing. So the goal is to have. That it also gives us a way for our, our staff to come down and grab a lunch if they don't bring one. Yeah. Just it's a couple extra options out there. Okay. Anything else? Like this? <clears throat> I assume that the tractor has a muffler system. You know, on, on the the engine itself. Yes. So we, what is, is most of the noise? Just the RPM running on the PTO. The PTO is not based off that muffler system. That's off the back end. Not just spinning the pump to get it to work. Okay, thank you. Good Actually, a variation of that question. Vacuum pump or liquid pump? Vacuum pump. So that's why it's noisy. It's okay. Noisy, yeah, <coughs> yeah that can be quiet, but that's why it's noisy. Okay. That's right. it. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Now you get a chance to speak in rebuttal also. So in the winter time when they can't, do I have to state my name again? Sorry, sure, Sigrid sure. Slobby, 250 County S, Algoma. So in the winter time when the tractor cannot dump on the field or whatever, they, you know, put it on the fields per DNR regulations, a septic maintenance, I believe, comes with the semi. And he comes anywhere, you know, eight in the, after eight in the morning until never hear him after five o'clock. So, so well, I'm not home. So of course I don't. I don't. We don't hear that. But um, as far as you know, doing it at five in the morning. I mean, it's just. It's just kind of annoying. So. Okay. Any questions? How long have you lived there? Uh, almost thirty years. Okay. Long time resident. Not yes. a recent purchase. No. Okay. Like you said, it had started. You know, in the last couple of years. Um, all right, thank you. Thank you. Okay, so that will conclude that hearing. And we'll move on then. Okay. Thomas Vasco, Stephen and Catherine Lobenstein petition for an amendment to the detailed zoning map of the Thomas Vasco tree zone a 0 0.652 acre parcel from Countryside CS to Commercial Center CC. The rezoning request is being sought to establish a commercial office use on the property. The parcel is located at uh, 4052 State Highway 4257 in Section 28, Town 28 North, Range 26 East. <coughs> Okay, if we can go to the zoning map on page 49. There we go. So, 0.65 acre parcel highlighted in yellow here. You can see that there is countryside to the west as well as to the east and the south. Um, uh, to the north, there are some areas that are zoned CC, uh, which include a use of a food trailer as a restaurant. Um, you'll also notice that here's the split and the mill supper club is to the north. 
um, to the south in this area right here that is zone CC. Uh, we have Blonick Investment Group, uh, Grandma Tommy's, which is a retail store, and the former winery slash retail store, Door 44. Um, and then, as I said before, we have Countryside, Wetland. We also have a piece that um, is zoned commercial center. Uh, there used to be a retail store there. I don't believe that's there any longer. And then across the street where you see the CC, um, you may recall the Bayside Dock. I believe there was a conditional use for that. Um, as well as Thielen's Construction has a professional uh, trading contractor establishment there. Um, Similar to the other cases, we have the table of uses up on the staff report, uh, pages 57 through 64. Um, of note, if we go to page 59, what's being proposed or the reason for the rezoning? Uh, professional office right here. <coughs> right now, zoned commercial center, or excuse me, countryside. It is not allowed. Uh, the proposal for commercial center, it is allowed. Um, but obviously, you can look through the chart and see all the other uses which would be allowed in the commercial center. So if you have any questions with regard to that, let me know. Um, as far as background of this area, I think I mentioned earlier, um, Grandma Tommy's. That was rezoned to Commercial Center in 2004. Um, Thielen's construction property, or Thielen's property across the street on the west side of the highway, that was rezoned in 2015. Um, and then that one lot uh, to the south of the intersection, um, to the south about two lots, um, that was zoned Commercial Center back when we adopted our new ordinance in 1995. So just to try to give you a little history of all the rezonings that have taken place in this general vicinity. Um, other than that, I think I'll turn it over to Mariah for planning considerations unless you have questions for me. So the planning considerations and rezoning considerations start on page 54. And again, same questions that you generally look at with the rezoning, whether there's a mistake, whether you're trying to accommodate changes in the neighborhood, whether what's being proposed is going to be somehow vastly different from what's allowed around it, et cetera. Um, and in this case, um, the, <coughs> the future land use map does actually call that whole stretch commercial. If you go to, I think it's page, 65? Yes. You can see that that whole stretch, when the town of Sebastopol did its comprehensive plan, they designated that as commercial. So this is within what would be allowed or considered as their vision for the, the future of the town. One thing to point out with that um, is in the text of the plan, one of the things that the state requires us to do is to point out any conflicts between town plans and county plans. And while we did on our future land use map match that commercial designation that the town wanted, the idea of continuing to have commercial development climb up the highway is something that's not um, called for, I guess, in the plan. But as Sue pointed out, there already have been a number of rezonings that have been happening along that stretch. Plus, I believe that the applicant's plan um, is to also get rid of one of the driveways so that I think three different parcels will be using just one driveway, which is one of the reasons that the comprehensive plan generally doesn't like commercial development to keep crawling up the highway because it can cause traffic problems. But I think they're, they're working on potentially alleviating that. So if you have any questions about any planning considerations, I'd be happy to answer them, but that's all I have. No? Okay. Dave? Page uh, 48, please. What's the green hash mark stuff by the self driveway? Oh, well, that's an easement. Oh, for the. I think to get into the. Um, Grandma Tommy's. Right? Probably. So it just ends at this parcel right here. That's really hard to see now. 
Well, you can kind of uh, okay. see it right there. And probably to that back. Um, probably, you know, because of how the highway right away goes there, you might have needed that in order to not have a landlocked parcel. Oh, there's that parcel in the, the back there, yeah. <coughs> I see that now. Okay. <coughs> Thank you. Okay, any other questions? If not, would the applicant please come forward? My name is Steve Lobenstein, 4997 Rip Road in the town of Sevastopol. Um, as again, there's a lot of things mentioned here that why this should be more commercial there. And this is fast, it's in the Sevastopol comprehensive plan um, to have this all commercial, which was mentioned. Commercial zoning adjacent south and north of me. Removal of, I'm gonna removal of the driveway, which will help highway safety and I'll be coming in the existing driveway of Grandma Tommy's. And this, these driveways were looked over by the state, and I am in an agreement with the state once that property is actually used for commercial zoning, that I have to abandon that 4052 driveway. And I have to enter on the blinding investment in Grandma Tommy's driveway. Do you want to point to that one? Okay. Don't on the wires. Okay, this is this is 4052 the, the par studs I'm asking to rezone. This is uh, I'm looking for the driver coming in here. Uh, here's a driver going out. No, I'm sorry. Kind of hard to see on this map. You think it's is this the one that you're getting rid of? It's the only driveway. The one, that, the the one that serviced the property of 4052. So that's yeah. this. Right okay. Yeah. The one that is on tax parcel 44E, which is Blonick Investment, that's the one that services Grandma Tommy's, and it will service Blonick Investment, and it will service 4052. Okay. okay. So yeah. So near so the green one. hatching. Yeah. Yeah. And when I did this, the state came up, and we came into agreement, which is the best ways to prevent traffic problems here and that was that was what they recommended and that's what is recorded in the deed and that's recorded in deed um, volume 1042 page 722 and if you'd like to see it I could pass it around guys uh, or else I could read it the restricted covenants Anybody like to see it at all? No. no. Fine. Okay, and also the town board and the town planning commission unanimously approved this. So I thank you for hearing my request today. Um, and thanks much. Any questions, Dave? Um, then you're going to have an easement across Blonix to get to that driveway then? What's that? You'll have an easement across Blonix to get to that driveway? Yes, I do have an easement across right. Blonix. Yep. That was it. Okay. Any other questions? <coughs> okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, anybody else wishing to speak in favor of the petition? Anybody else wishing to speak in favor? Anybody wishing to speak in favor? Okay. There was the one letter in favor. No Correct. new letters. No new letters. Okay, anybody wishing to speak against the proposal? Anybody wishing to speak against the proposal? Anybody wishing to speak against the proposal? Okay, well then there's no need for rebuttal. And we'll close that one and we'll move on to the next one. Town of Liberty Grove. Daniel D. and Shannon J. Jungworth. Is it, or is it Youngworth? Youngworth. Youngworth. Yeah. Trustees of the David D. Youngworth and Shannon J. Youngworth Revocable Trust, dated February 17, 2009, petition for an amendment to the detailed zoning map of the town of Liberty Grove to rezone the upland portion of a 2.75 acre parcel from Heartland 3.5 to mixed-use commercial. 
The rezoning will make the existing non-conforming trade and contract use of the existing building used as equipment supply storage building for property management business a conforming use in the mixed use commercial zoning district. The parcel is located at 2530 Settlement Road in Section 18, Town 31 North, Range 28 East. Okay. If we go to page 72, we have the zoning map there. The parcel in question is located here. <coughs> just to give you a general location of this, it's located just south of the village of Sister Bay and just east of the village of Ephraim. Um, obviously, you see the highway located here, Settlement Road to the south. Um, currently on the 2.75 acre lot is a single family residence as well as the storage building which is 40 by 56. I believe the intent of the rezoning is to make the existing use of that storage building conforming. Right now it's a non-conforming use um, and I believe they may want to replace that but that's something you can ask the applicant when they come up. Um, Otherwise, just looking at the zoning map, obviously, we have Heartland 3.5, this darker green to the north, Heartland 5 to the northeast, for the majority of the south, Heartland 10, and then you'll see along the highway we have a larger strip of mixed-use commercial. Um, throughout the Heartland districts, um, they're rather large lots that are uh, contain residences and some lots are vacant as well. Um, and then if we go to the air photo, page 71 I believe it is. Oh, one above that please. I'm sorry. Um, if you remember this was the mixed use commercial area right here is an existing commercial storage building. Um, otherwise, as mentioned before, we have a scattering of residential lots, some of which are vacant. Um, just to give a little bit of background, we already talked about the purpose of the rezoning, and of course you can ask for additional details from the applicant. Um, but the previous owner, who I believe was the father of the applicant, had a masonry contractor business here in 1987. Um, and then later the property was rezoned, it, it, excuse me, it was rezoned to accommodate that use. Um, later when the 1995 ordinance was adopted, the property then re went to the Heartland 3.5. So really they're just trying to bring this use into a conforming status. Um, starting on page 78, we have the table of uses. Um, we don't have the districts highlighted here, but I want to point out on page 80 is the trade and contractor establishment view. I can find it right here. So looking at, here we go. To the MC district right here. Losing my spot. So permitted use in the MC zone district. Um, other than that, I just wanted to point out page 80, and then I will turn it over to Mariah for planning considerations. So if you go to page 76, again, same questions, whether there was a mistake, whether circumstances have changed, etc. Um, and based on um, as you heard in Sue's explanation, it's possible that this actually was a mistake, that it didn't get zoned to something that would have allowed it to be conforming in 1995 when the new ordinance was adopted since it had been rezoned previously to accommodate a somewhat similar use. Um, the use has been there, or a similar use has been there for quite a while, so even though the area is designated, is designated on the future land use map as rural, residential, um, they're, we're not real concerned as far as any inconsistencies with the plan because it really is just trying to accommodate something that's there and that has been there or historically have, has had similar uses there. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Questions? Questions? No. Oh, Dave? Um, when I went looking at the Door County uh, EIS map, I couldn't find that address. Um, but I did find the house address, so it has two separate addresses. 
You mean it wasn't showing up on the map? Yep, I did a search for it through parcel search by, and at 54, uh, 2530 does not come up, 2524 does, which is that parcel that this is on. Yeah, I mean, lots of parcels have more than one address. Yeah, so I, so when I, I did the search, I couldn't find it. Okay. Sometimes it, just, it does show up here. Sometimes you it, have to It's on my map as well, visually, okay. but when I did the search by parcel search, It might default by address, to the house. That's what I was wondering. Yeah, okay. I think it does when there's two addresses on a parcel. Because that number I did find. Yeah. Interesting. I can ask about our addressing thing, because I think it does too. That was just a curiosity. Yeah. There was something I was missing about that. Anything else? Any other questions? Otherwise, would the applicant please come forward? <clears throat> Dan Youngworth, 2524 Sullivan Road, Sister Bay. Um, <clears throat> we, I have a property maintenance business. I bought the property from my father-in-law, who had a mason business. Before that, it was a cherry plant. On my um, uh, tax, bill. tax bill, it did say that it was commercial. <coughs> so when we bought, we thought it was commercial. And so I didn't think anything about it when I was running my business out of it. And uh, when I want to get rid, I want to put up a new building, a heated storage unit take away the <coughs> storage unit. And when we started that process, I was told it's not commercial and we had to change. Okay. Okay. Any questions for the applicant? No, thank you. Right. Anybody else wishing to speak in favor? <coughs> Anybody else wishing to speak in favor? Anybody else wishing to speak in favor? All right, and we have the one letter in favor. Correct. Anybody wishing to speak against the proposal? Anybody wishing to speak against? Anybody wishing to speak against? Okay, and there's no letters against? No. So we'll close this here. <coughs> and we'll move on to, I guess the one almost everybody's here for, huh? Town of Sevastopol, <coughs> Luke Teagues, Tiggs, Tiggs, Luke Tiggs, on behalf of a Oregon Family Irrevocable Dynasty Trust, petitions for an amendment to the detailed zoning map of the Town of Sevastopol to rezone a 2.63 acre parcel from recreational, commercial, and estate to mixed use commercial. The rezoning request is being sought to establish a retail use on the property. The property is located at 4680 Bayshore Drive, County B, uh, County Highway B, in Section 18, Town 28 North, Range 26 East. Do <coughs> you want us to take a little break? No, no, I just. Okay. Then if we can go to page 93 of the zoning map. Which page? 93? 93. Okay, I just wanted to show you the zoning districts in this area. Obviously, this is the west side of Sevastopol <coughs> on Bayshore. Um, the parcel in question is highlighted. It's on the, what I would call the northeast side of the, the road. Um, you can see it's within a section that is zoned recreational commercial. Um, to the northeast, we have a state zoning, and then both to the north and to the south, we have single family residential 20,000. Um, primarily on the waterfront and then on the north side we have it non waterfront areas as well um, so this is a 2.63 acre parcel um, just to give you a little background um, the, the parcel was previously uh, called the cabin it was a restaurant and tavern um, and since 1995 when we had our new ordinance the property has been zoned RC um, as far as adjacent properties in here, if we go to the air photo, and it might be the second air photo, maybe 91. There we go. Um, the parcel in question here, uh, there is a bait <coughs> shop to the what I'm call north at this point. Uh, 
uh, that was authorized in 2009, and that's within the Recreational Commercial District. There's about four lots to, in this area that are zoned RC. Okay, <coughs> so that is a business. It's just allowed in that Recreational Commercial The bait shop. District. <coughs> there is a, a bait shop. Yeah. I don't have the information on how that was authorized, but it was authorized in 2009. Do you recall the history of that one? No. I don't recall the history yes, of that one. I was just going to say, is your question that because it's a bait shop, you think that fits recreational use? Or is a bait shop it's retail business. doesn't the, fit The letters were against the business being here, and there are already out of businesses uh, you know, so both to, sides of the road there. So. I, I'll look at the table of uses to see if I can figure out how that was authorized. Um, outdoor recreational sales and services. I'll look at that um, while Mariah's giving her okay. <laughs> planning consideration. Um, but we'll get to that. So, you know, there are some businesses that are allowed in recreational commercial, okay. um, but not all. Um, just to give you a general idea of the, the area along mm. this area, we have a mixture of single family residences as well as a multiple occupancy development of our restaurant. You'll remember, I think it's right here, Birmingham's, mm -hmm. made up of multiple cottages as well as that uh, bar. Give me one second to turn the page here. Okay, as with uh, the other rezonings here tonight, we have the table of uses <coughs> starting on page 110 through 117 of interest. If we look on page 112, the reason for the rezoning is to allow for retail, which we have highlighted here to help my eyes. <laughs> and as you can see, it's zoned um, RC with some footnotes, and I'll explain that in a second. What's being proposed is MC which is a permitted use with only one footnote. We do have the footnotes on here, but what that <coughs> the footnotes mean, and Mariah's probably going to move to that, is retail's only allowed in the RC district if it's part of a larger development. And to kind of give you an idea of this, uh, Wave Point in the town of Gardner is a large multiple occupancy development with a conference hall, etc. And within that larger development, they're allowed to have a very small gift shop. So that's what the, this text footnote, excuse me, number four is talking about, is that only if you have a much larger development can you have that smaller retail, which their proposal doesn't meet, and is which is why they're proposing to rezone it uh, as we're talking today. Other than that, I believe that's all I had to talk about, and I'll turn it over to Mariah, and while she's talking about planning considerations, I'll see if I can find this. Page 107 is where the questions regarding the zoning start, so as far as whether or not there was a mistake, whether circumstances in the neighborhood have changed, you know, how it's going to be different from um, neighborhood or the surrounding zoning, et cetera. In this case, as Sue had pointed out on the map earlier and said verbally, there's it's in the middle of kind of a clump of recreational commercial zoning, and that is in place because of the historic restaurants and bars <coughs> and multiple occupancy developments that were there. Um, but in that area and in that zoning district, um, straight out retail is not allowed. The idea behind the prohibition, or not prohibition, but restrictions on retail in that neighbor, um, in that zoning district is again for it to be part of a larger development so maybe you've got a restaurant that has a small <coughs> gift shop attached or maybe you've got a hotel that's got some retail associated with it on the future land use map the county comprehensive plan um, designation shows that property as a mixture of commercial and rural residential because um, there is a, a portion of the property that i believe is zoned to the state as well as the recreational commercial <coughs> excuse me so Generally, as far as the, com the comprehensive plan, um, when we designated the areas that were going to be commercial, we didn't look down to the nuances of the zoning districts in question. And so um, if you do a strict analysis of the comprehensive plan, retail probably fits <coughs> that commercial designation. But again, there is no other retail like that in the neighborhood. Um, and the other thing that I'd like to point out, I know there's some 
town board members here and the town board um, voted against this petition that constrains what you're allowed to do by law um, so you if the town I don't think they've filed a formal protest petition but if the town were to do so and they can still do so even after this hearing then you can't grant the rezoning you can only recommend a modification or um, or a denial so I guess you can talk for the <coughs> town board members if they're here to testify as to what their intention might be um, because that's that's the way the statutes are written when a town enters into county comprehensive zoning that's one of the perks that they get that's the way they can retain some control they can't make you change maps but they can prevent you from changing their maps if they don't want it to happen so that's all I have if I can yep possibly answer the question that someone had about the the bait shop yes bait shop to the north constructed in 2009 I believe my best guess is if we look on page 112 and if my memory serves me correctly if we look at the non motorized recreational equipment sales and service <coughs> the bait shop I believe fell under that which is a permitted use in the RC district um, but that is purely a guess because I don't have the file with me, but I believe that's how it was authorized. And again, there was a text amendment under that use in 2013, which was after the bait shop was authorized. So that the text amendment just changed the name. Okay. <coughs> okay. But that is my best guess. Okay. Any questions? I guess. No. Go ahead. Um, so non-motorized recreational equipment sales service rentals, how is it defined? I mean, how, is there like a definition we can look up for that or is it? It's typically been things like kayaks, canoes, fishing. Um, I'm trying to think of what else has fallen into that. Bicycles. Okay. But not mopeds. But not mopeds. Mopeds fall yeah. into the motorized. So um, not or segways. Boats. Correct. Segways would fall into the motorized. Um, <clears throat> so no specific definition, but as my said. Okay. okay. Thank you. I would have the same question. But I'll, I'll ask a little different. Recreational equipment sales. Fishing. My pool is not used for business, it is recreational. It is a piece of equipment. How does, and they're looking to sell recreational equipment as far as I'm concerned. How does that not fit in here? They're not selling just pools. I mean, and it would be- Spa would be the same thing. Retail. Billboard, uh, a billiard table, you, same thing. The base shop's on a different property, right? It is on a different yeah. property. Okay. But um, if you want us to go get the file for that bait shop, we can do that. I don't know how that got authorized in 2009. That might have been kind of a stretch as far as calling it recreational. I'm happy equipment. to go get the file um, if you'd like. But I mean, if you right. have one, right. it's pretty right. hard to shut out another one. Well, may I interrupt and ask, modify your question to that? Yeah. When they say non-motorized because a pool and a pump, a pool has a pump, a hot tub has a pump, I'm presuming we're talking about movable vehicle motorized. But we don't know that. That's what we, that's how we've historically interpreted that section. That, that's why I'm saying when the bait shop got authorized, it might have been kind of a stretch for how the zoning was. But I'm heading towards quite answer. But then how does how does a night crawler fit into that <laughs> definition you're bringing up? We have. We'll go get that file. Sure. I'm happy sure. to do that. I'll be right back. <coughs> yeah, I'm kind of in your same question it, range. It may have it's a also. Pool motor, it's not I'm not familiar with the property where the bait shop is. <coughs> it may have also been part of something larger there. I don't know whether that was because again, remember you can have retail in this district if it's part of a larger project and development. Well, that was my question. I just. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Okay. And while we're waiting for her, where where on the map is that uh, that Bay particular shop? place? Yeah. Um, Oops. Is it this one? The beach up here across from. Uh, 
Birmingham. Directly across, yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh. I know, I know where it I is. I think I know. I think that was a store before. It was. It was a bait shop. Mm -hmm. That's That was before zoning. Now that I know where it is. That's the one across yep. Birmingham's, right? Yep. Yeah. I faintly remember a store of some sort of type yep. of activity there. Which, so I think, it's, it's, I think keep we can verify that when it's in it, but I think it, uh, exactly. Okay. So if it would have predated zoning, it would have been considered retail. Okay. Yeah, Yeah, because once we don't look at what somebody's selling or selling, it's just, it's retail or it's, yeah. we can see what's see it's better. Do we need? To, I was just going to say, do we need to wait for? Or can we start taking testimony? Would the applicant please come forward? Yeah. <coughs> yeah. 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 Good afternoon. My name is Attorney James Smith. I'm here on behalf of Good Mr. Tiggs and his wife Brooke. My address is 49 North Madison Avenue, Sturgeon Bay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman and committee members for your time today. Um, my client, Mr. Tiguez, is currently under contract by the property located at 4680 Bayshore Drive. Uh, as you all know at this point, the property is currently zoned recreational commercial uh, with a negligible portion of it zoned as estate. Mr. Tiggis and his wife, Brooke, would like to open a small pool and spa family business on the property. Now, as previously stated under the resident, excuse me, recreational commercial zoning designation, retail store is a permitted use so long as such use is incorporated into a larger development and the floor area dedicated to the retail use does not exceed 30% of the floor area of the buildings which serve the development's clientele. Um, in other words, uh, as Jeff Cuso kindly paraphrased for me, if another land use is authorized via zoning permit on that property, not that they have to get a permit, but if another land use is permitted on that property, 30% of the floor area may be dedicated to the retail store land use. We're here today because Mr. Tiggis has filed a petition to amend the zoning map to change zoning from recreational commercial to uh, mixed use commercial. This zoning designation of mixed use commercial would permit Mr. and Mrs. Tiggis' business to use 100% of the floor area for retail purposes. Now, before Investing in this property, Mr. and Mrs. Tiggis worked closely with the Door County Economic Development Corporation, as well as the Wisconsin Small Business Development Center to develop a comprehensive business plan, uh, which I believe is in the packets that you've all received today. Currently, uh, there's no dedicated pool and spa maintenance com company in the county. Um, this is despite the fact that Door County is home to in upwards of 120 uh, resorts. Mr. and Mrs. Tiggis' small business would fill this void while removing the eyesore that is currently 4680 Bayshore Drive. Um, so I'm going to hand the floor over to Mr. Tiggis, but in closing, I'd like to thank the committee again for their time today and for their consideration. Afternoon. I'm Luke Tigges, uh, 4680 Bayshore Drive. Um, this would be our second pool and spa location. Uh, as James Smith just mentioned, the building itself is 3,100 square feet. Uh, we're looking to obtain 928 of it just for retail, which falls underneath the 30% category. So in the, in the recreational use, you have to have under 30%. 30% of 3,100 is 930. We're just going to be using 928 strictly for retail. Um, we do the hot tubs, we do saunas, we do billiard tables, and we do pools. Um, 121 resorts up here, not a single pool and spa company. We specialize in that. We've been doing works for almost a year now up here. We've been steady at it. Um, 
So we're just looking to grow, looking to uh, take 4680 Bayshore Drive, how it looked before, and I've had compliments from some of the people back there that <laughs> have said that I've cleaned up the property. The property doesn't look like such an eyesore anymore. It's been like that for two, three years now. I've cleaned it up. Uh, I want to put paint on it. I want to make it look presentable to the community. Um, kind of make it to what everybody could see as a vision for Door County and the residents here and the people that vacation here. Um, talk about the motorized and the pools and then the hot tubs. Uh, no, we don't have wheels on them, obviously, but yes, you do got motors on them. What's the definition of a motor? Is it gasoline or is it electric fed? You know, are we going to get that nitty gritty here? I don't know. You know. I'm just looking to take 30% and just make it strictly retail. That's all I'm looking to do. So 928 square feet out of the 3,100, I should fall underneath when it's already been categorized as. So. Any questions? I guess I'm trying to make, make the correlation of your 30%. Where you're referencing the 30% to to make sure I understand okay. you're referencing sure. the intent and what, what the remaining 70% would be intended. Okay, for. so the if you look it up online, it says it's 3,100 square feet, okay. the building that's for sale for the 680 Bay Shore Drive. 3,100 square feet. The showroom, the showroom floor that I intend to start using would be I don't know if you've ever been there before, but you walk in. Very and they, long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> they had the bar right there, okay? The rest of it was all kitchen, um, little dining room. You'd step up, and there'd be a dining area up there, the kitchen area. Then you got the upstairs apartment that they had. We're going to take from where you step up on to um, where it'd be the dining area and the kitchen. All that's been gutted out already. Uh, that's all going to be living quarters. And then just from where the bar is, that whole area right there, which would be the 928 square feet, which I'm talking about, that would strictly be pool and spa company. Okay, so I guess I'm, uh, you're, you're obviously working towards an understanding of a 30% correct rule. And I'm wondering how you're applying that since the rest of the space you're de describing is um, uh, residential space? Correct. Um, so there was already residential there. Above the garage, there was a studio apartment. So we're just continuing that residency down. So the 70% of the building would be residential? Correct. Okay. And you choose 30% for what reason? I, you know, I didn't even know about the 30% well, that's thing. what I'm trying to get to. I, that I didn't even know about it before. Okay. Sure. If what he's describing is was allowed under the ordinance, he wouldn't need the rezoning. In so once it gets rezoned, 100% of the entire property can be used for whatever is allowed yeah. in that zoning yeah. district. I was just seeing if there was a correlation to the 30% we mentioned yeah. and the 30% you're right. It's got it, the way it, um, the, the attorney um, read the, it, the way the retail is allowed now under recreational commercial is if no more than 30% of a larger development is, is comprised of retail that serves that development's clientele. I understand that. So, yeah. And I think that's where we were, we were mistaken on is... I was trying to make sure that maybe he understood where 30% was intended and how you were applying it. That's why I was trying to yeah. understand how you're using it. Yeah, that. and I'd, I'd be more than happy to show anybody what the team measure. I mean, I'm not trying to pull the wool no, over anybody's eyes. I, I, from the very get-go, I had this area cut out to where this is going to be the living quarters. This is strictly going to be showroom floor. And we thought we had to get everything rezoned and come to find out there was this 30%. We didn't know about it. We just found out from Jeff Kusos about this. You know, and then at one of the other meetings, somebody brought it up to our attention that, hey, you guys fall under the 30%. So I think we're kind of at a, well, what's really- I think there's a misunderstanding here. Exactly. I think there's a the misunderstanding is on yes. the end. Yes, you, yes. It need, the retail in this zoning district has to be part of a larger development, and there's got to be a clientele for that development. A family home doesn't count as a development that okay, has so like can a hotel I make an office? or a restaurant or- so Campground. Or, a campground, yeah, if you had a campground in the okay. Sony district, you could have a store. Um, what about but office a home space? is not going to qualify. Okay, what about office space? It would have to, it, the retail has to serve or be part of the larger development, so you can't just have like random stuff going on and then have the 30% retail. It's going to be part of like a broader vision. If you didn't need to be here, we wouldn't have made you come here. Yeah, that's why we're <laughs> taking it. Oh, it's just really confusing because I've done this before and it's, it's just, 
<laughs> yeah. I haven't I mean, had this kind of problem. We would not have made you come for a reason yeah. if you didn't need it. Yeah. So but I just, but I just want to make sure that committee's clear that if it were to get rezoned, that that whole lot will, right. would be commercial and could be anything. divided up or used up for anything that's in that district. You had a question, Vinny? I'm going to wait a minute because I'm oh. digesting this. Okay. <laughs> that was it. Oh, okay. A similar number showed up and I wanted clarification on Okay. Anybody else? Anybody else? Okay. Do you want to ask a question or do you want to? I just was clear. I think Mariah clarified it. I was just wondering about a resident being able to be the seventy percent, and you know, thinking that it was meant to be a business that was, you know, one hundred percent business. Thirty percent of that's retail, and that's what recreational commercial allows. Okay. That, so I think I understand it. Thank okay. You good. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else wishing to speak in favor? No. Anybody else wishing to speak in favor of the petition? <coughs> Anybody else wishing to speak in favor? Okay, uh, there was one new letter in favor in the packet you gave me? In the second packet. The second packet? Yes. All right. sure in. Okay. Otherwise, there were no letters in favor, correct? Correct. correct. All right. Anybody wishing to speak against the petition? Anybody wishing to speak against? Anybody that wants to come up and speak? Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> my name is uh, Jim Nellen. I'm a supervisor for the town of Sevastopol. And as uh, uh, Mariah mentioned earlier, this matter came before both our planning committee as well as the town board. And did, both did you give us your address? Oh, I'm sorry. 4501 Lori Lane. Okay, and then I need to ask, are you here speaking for yourself or representing the town? I, I, I'll represent the town uh, in, in this regard. Uh, the um, Is that what you were going to ask, Dave? Yes. <laughs> I think you do it this time. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> this matter came before the, uh, both the town planning committee as well as the uh, town board. It was uh, in both instances, there was a unanimous uh, vote uh, to uh, object to the res uh, to the rezoning uh, to changing the use uh, classification of this. Uh, this is a uh, and this was strongly felt by residents. Uh, not just up and down Bayshore, but other people uh, within hailing distance of this property. There is an appreciation of the fact that when this property, this property has been a restaurant for a long, long period of time, predating the, uh, the uh, development of the zoning, uh, comprehensive zoning ordinance. Uh, this is truly a residential area. Uh, there are areas that are currently zoned uh, residential commercial across the street that have been purchased and are now being transformed into residences. Uh, the, uh, it was clear that uh, this proposal was not consistent uh, with, uh, the, uh, with the town's comp comprehensive plan. Uh, it's not key in keeping with the emerging, well, with the existing residential nature of the area, and certainly uh, as these properties are being acquired, they are, tr they are being converted into uh, residential properties. There um, are other commercial uh, options available. Uh, the uh, as has been noted, once the change, if it, if if this property use classification were to be changed, it would be retail in perpetuity, uh, which is of some considerable concern to uh, both town residents as well as to the town board. Uh, the, the town, quite frankly, based on earlier uh, appreciating. Uh, the, 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 the conversations that's occurred around this table about the use of spot zoning to achieve certain end uses. Uh, there, uh, the, the, the town is aware of the fact, um, in contrast to the earlier application, that uh, this is not an appropriate instance for spot zoning. The, uh, there, there's, there's no question that one letter you've gotten in favor of this uh, came from a business that uh, would be, they believe they're, they're, that this would facilitate uh, their, their ongoing <laughs> business. Uh, and there's certainly a benefit to Mr. Tiggies in being able to develop this property. But it works in our mind 
it, 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 it uh, a disadvantage to uh, residents, to residential, uh, to people who own residents up and down. And it's not a case where uh, the, the it, it's, it's, it's an instance in our mind where uh, the impact on the community far, far outweighs whatever the parochial benefit might be to the individual seeking the change. There's also, as we said, and I'm repeating myself, there's, uh, there are other alternatives uh, that uh, uh, and, and turning for one moment to this issue of 30 percent, the petitioner is seeking to rezone the property. As has been pointed out, if this board, uh, if this committee were to decide to accommodate him in that regard, there's no need to discuss about to discuss the 30 percent. Uh, I, uh, we are under the impression, uh, uh, our impression is the same as has been advanced uh, by. Uh, by uh, Mariah, our understanding is is that for the 30% factor to come into play, there has to be another uh, development that does comply with the zoning code and that the retail uh, has to be uh, no more than 30% of a larger development that is otherwise permitted under the zoning code. And the classic example is something like a restaurant that has a small gift shop or a uh, golf course that has a small pro shop. Uh, that would be, in our mind, based on the narrative explanation of what RC is all about, <coughs> that would seem to be uh, to come naturally. This is obviously not a situation because the petitioner doesn't seem to be able to identify a larger development that would be permissible under the zoning code. Uh, I think, to a great extent, that is almost <coughs> Uh, that, that is probably uh, can be taken off the table because that's not what uh, is bef before the committee, but what's before this committee is whether or not the use classification should be changed. Um, that's, if you have any questions you want to ask of me. Any questions? Dave? Uh, since you are here representing, you've, you've indicated you're representing the town board. Uh, the comment that the planner made in reference to um, one of the benefits that you gain, what did you call that again? It's, well, what, it's what, what, what I want, veto authority. What I want to know is whether or not you are aware of it during your discussion <laughs> and that stuff. We are aware of it. Yeah. That's all. Thank you. Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay. Anybody else wishing to speak against the petition? Anybody else wishing to speak against the petition? Anybody else wishing to speak against the petition? Okay, and there are one or two letters against, I guess? There were a couple of, <laughs> in, in the first packet. In the second packet, there were maybe another dozen yeah. that were in opposition. Okay. All right. Uh, since both sides testified, if uh, the petitioner would like to come up and rebut what the town, uh, I, I don't remember your name, but I'll just say Ooh. what the town presented to us. You have the right to do that. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Attorney James Smith, on behalf of Mr. Tigges, the petitioner, uh, just to rebut a comment made by the previous speaker with regard to the impact on the community, uh, Mr. Nellon advanced the unsubstantiated argument <laughs> that. Mr. Tigges' building would have a negative impact on the community. Um, I, I do reject that hypothesis on the grounds that for decades this business served as a bar and restaurant with a Class B liquor license that was open till well, pretty much all hours of the night. Uh, Mr. Tigges' business, on the other hand, would only be open Monday through Friday, uh, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. So um, for a, a small family-owned business, it's pretty innocuous. It's not one that drives a lot of traffic. Um, and again, I'd like to thank the committee for their time today. 
Any questions? Go ahead. I have a question just in general. Um, when Luke came up here, he said that his residence was 4680, but is, is that where you live or is that, I know it's the property we're talking about, but do you currently live there? It's good. We're working on switching it over. Okay. That's, that, okay. That was All right, thank you. Okay. Thank you. I wondered that as well, but didn't say Okay. And <laughs> since you spoke, <coughs> you can rebut his if you choose to. Well, you can too, yeah. speak for yourself if you wish. Luke Tigas, 4680 Bayshore Drive, Luke's Oh, I guess, you know, I'm not going to be selling any alcohol, you know, it's going to be a pretty... The building's been sitting empty for two or three years now, and it's been starting to look pretty run down. And people want to keep Bayshore Drive looking to a certain place and certain standards, and they're letting this building fall apart. All I'm doing is putting money back into the community, creating jobs, and I don't see... I don't see, I guess what the big deal is with me taking something that they've let to go disarray, making it look better, creating jobs and strengthening the economy up here. So that's all I have to say. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Now, if you'd like to rebut. Thank you. My name is uh, Jim Nellen. I'm a uh, uh, supervisor for the town of Sapsville, residing at 4501 Lori Lane. Uh, the, there's a balancing act we understand that this committee has to undertake with regard to changing a, a, a zoning classification. We appreciate that. Uh, and you measure the benefit that accrues to one person against the general societal cost or risk to, uh, uh, to adjacent landowners. Uh, the, 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 if, if the, and that if there is an adverse impact, and there certainly is an adverse impact, as as has been communicated to us by by a goodly number of residents living up and down uh, Bayshore Drive, uh, and, a, and a sincere belief that this is going to work to uh, their disadvantage. That this is not in keeping with the residential character. The previous use of the building, uh, which long predated the adoption of the Comprehensive Zoning Ordinance. Had, you know, was part of the fabric of the community. Uh, uh, similarly, with uh, the resort that's up the street. Uh, that, but th this is a different. This is something different. This is a proposal to rezone it to uh, allow uh, a retail activity. Uh, retail activity, uh, and once rezoned, you can never go back. And I think that there is a legitimate, a very legitimate concern on the part of the residents that uh, that. Uh, uh, it, this again is is contradictory to certainly the evolving, not only the existing residential <coughs> character, but the clearly evolving residential character. That's, oh, thank you. Okay, so you're not really opposed to the project presented. You're you're against what could become of the property later on. Because, it, to my way of thinking, I would have a pool. I deal with folks <coughs> on Green Bay. <coughs> Monday through Friday, a lot less impact, a lot better living next to that for, for me, at, as opposed to a bar with heavy traffic coming and going, drinking, loud noises outside, going till 2, 3 o'clock in the morning. I'd much rather have that in my neighborhood than that bar. So now I'm just telling you, so I don't see, I understand where you're coming from, but his impact seems to have a lot less impact in the community than a loud bar would have. So. I don't think that the, the, the argument regarding traffic was, is, is that it's an argument that was advanced by the, by the petitioner uh, and but the, 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 none of the, uh, the complaints that, are, that have been raised really turn on increased traffic. We appreciate that. I think that, uh, and this is very unscientific, <coughs> my sense of this is the community, given the drugs, would love to see a restaurant back in there. 
Uh, I think that it had uh, been fully incorporated into the life of the, of the area. They enjoyed it. Uh, they, uh, uh, and, and this is, I think, uh, in terms of the residential character, not it's in the changed. recreational, it's, cha it's changed. And it's, 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 it's deemed to be a much more of a, of a commercial enterprise. Okay, I understand. And Go ahead. And this, this may be a question where um, planning can help as well, but in the sale of a property, if it was grandfathered in because it was in use before zoning was in place there, it would would it be allowed to be a restaurant again anyway? I mean, would, or because that they would that fit a, recreational they would need a, commercial? I think that's allowed in recreational commercial, but they'd need a okay. new permit at this point because it's okay. been closed for more than 18 months, I think is the word. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, so we have the bottle. Just to just oh, to yeah. finalize that, it, a restaurant or tavern is a conditional use in the RC district. Okay. Just so that you're aware. Okay, so yeah, if somebody was going to try and reestablish a restaurant or a bar there, they would need to come to you to get the, the public. Because of the length of time the previous one was closed. Correct. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. Uh, well, then we will close the hearing. Because we took oh, care of all four of them, correct? We ask at this time about the file folder of that other business that was there. The big shop. Uh, I thought the big shop that's there. She brought the file down for us yeah. to review. Oh, I thought she was over there before. It be no. Yeah. So it was a recreational equipment sales. Um, We're talking about the bait shop. The bait shop. And that was done when? In two thousand nine, I believe. Yes. That wasn't a new building put up there, was it? That was there a was an rehab building. Addition, and I believe there is a variance granted for the addition. I remember right, there was an old shed there at one time. Yeah, there was something there. I thought there was a store, but yeah, that's what I had remembered. Some kind of a store too. So, and then in two thousand and seven. We had a variance, Brad Birmingham petitions for variance, which requires a structure to be set back 75 feet from the center of the right of way, proposes to construct a bait shop garage building with an upper level 54 and a half feet from County Highway B. So it was authorized as a bait shop. So that was before? That was in 2007. This was nine, but it was authorized originally in 07. Yeah, 07. An L shaped 26 by 46 structure to be used for a bait shop tackle sales. So I think that's where the recreational okay. sales and equipment, the bait. Okay with that? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Then we'll close the hearing. If there's nothing else, and we'll move into our regularly scheduled business meeting. Unless anybody needs a break. Uh, five minutes. We'll take a five-minute break. Thank you. And we have there's a quorum present. All five members. I need a motion to adopt the agenda. Motion to adopt the agenda is presented. Second. Second by Mr. Early. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. We're not going to read anything for that <coughs> public comment? No. Based on last yep. discussion, we're just going to. Uh, any other correspondence outside the, the hearings? No? Okay. Read and act on minutes of August 1st, 2019. Make a motion to approve the minutes. Thank you. Or second. Uh, second by Vinny. Any questions, comments, corrections, additions to those minutes? If not, all those in favor of the motion on the floor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. <coughs> Zoning amendment petitions. Uh, Chris Renard. I'll make a motion to approve the request as presented. Is there a second to that? No second. Second by Mr. Burley. Any questions on that? If not, all those in favor of the motion on the floor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Okay, that's. If I may, as a reminder, when it comes to rezoning, we can't make any conditions on a rezone. Correct. Purpose, correct. Yep. We, we can we can you alter can, or deny. You right. That's it. Yeah. Put it. But we can't. But we cannot say put conditions on. No, it. no. 
wanted the audience to make sure they understood that oh. we, we aren't able to okay. right. address uh, certain issues that were arisen. Stephen and Catherine Lobenstein. <laughs> Make a motion to approve. Second. Yes. Okay. Any questions on that one? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Daniel and Shannon Youngworth. Rezone the upland portion of 2.75 acre parcel from Heartland to mixed use commercial. I'll make a motion to approve that. I'll second. Okay, any questions on that one or comments? No. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Luke Diggis. Uh, he's owned a 2.63 acre parcel from recreational, commercial, uh, and estate to mixed use commercial. May I ask, Mr. Chairman, for a clarification of our real options here since the town board requested that not be approved? Um, if well, our offices don't change. Yeah, we still do. have the three. Well, because they then, if they don't like what we do, they have a right to deny it. Or well, I don't yeah, think we've ever had that in my little window of time, so I want to make sure I understood okay. our options. Yeah, I mean, if if they're serious about being in the opposition, um, they need to file a protest petition. Most of the time, when towns have objected, you generally have gone along with that and either recommended denial or a modification. If you decided to forward it as requested to county board, all you're forcing them to do is to go back and have another meeting in the next week to file the formal protest petition. The town so board. If you want to do that, you can you can do that and make them do it officially. The town board forcing the town board to go back and have correct. That meeting. Oh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> And, okay. and, and to re reiterate what you've often said, you, you put the strong understanding and weight to, to the town board's opinions and the plan commission's opinions. Always, always. Okay. They are the with local individuals with us. So that being said, uh, I'll make a motion to deny the request based on the town's understanding and comments. Is there a second to that? Second. Any questions on that? I may guess make sure is that a reasonable way to word that? Yeah, you're turning it down. Yeah. Okay. You can. I mean, it, when we do, um, if you're going to recommend denial to the county board, we do need to list reasons. But yeah. the town objecting is. And that's why I mentioned that. Yeah. Well, I, I guess I understand what the town is saying as far as changing it from a mix to a commercial use. Uh, once you put it commercial, anything could go there. That's should true. this person decide to sell the property? Uh, what prohibits a junkyard from going across the road? As an example, I'm not saying yeah, right. it was anybody's intention at all, but I mean, you got to consider all those other facts that raise concerns for the citizens also that live there. Um, as there's, you know, in my mind, there's certainly other areas and locations to start a business, such as Mr. Tegas. Um, yeah, I don't think it creates a hardship other than that he purchased the property, um, but certainly as far as business aspect of it goes there's certain other locations that would conform to that and I, I just also like the tool of having the conditional use permit as a, as a tool which we would not have if it was switched to mixed commercial because then we haven't we haven't seen a building plan we've seen a business plan but we have seen, seen a layout and a building yeah. plan I know the 30 70 percent doesn't apply to this anyway because they needed to come but we have no control over what would go in that space if it's moved to mixed commercial which being all surrounded in the area, we do have a say in that. So I think that would be another reason to deny for me. And a reminder that while there was a comment made that in perpetuity that is not the case because a piece of property can come back and be rezoned later as well. Um, so it isn't, even if we did make that decision, it's not guaranteed to be there forever. Somebody could still come back and rezone it to something else later on. But right now, Town's comments and the citizens' comments weigh heavily on it. Okay. Any other comments on that? All those. So the motion is to deny the petition, deny the rezoning. <coughs> All those in favor of the motion on the floor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. So that one is denied. Okay. 
Moving on. Land division matters. All right. Oh, that's tiny. Oh, that's 25. If you folks you wish to stay, you're welcome to stay. You um, don't have to. Your petition's passed. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. But ultimately, you're learning how your government operates yeah, as well, okay. right? <laughs> Thank you for your time. Yeah. Um, Conceptual plant I'm review. I'm sorry I took your thunder. <laughs> no, not at all. Not at all. Concept you didn't know if I was sleeping or not. Well, I, so. couldn't, I couldn't tell. My, <laughs> I had my glasses on. <laughs> Conceptual plat review for a major site condominium, the Uplands at Cottage Row. <coughs> 12 single family condominium building sites ranging in size from 1.7 to 2.3 acres. Owner Tom Birmingham, Cottage Row, Town of Gibraltar, small estate zoning district. Um, so even though this is part of your business agenda, you do generally invite the applicant up to talk about land divisions if you were. Well, do we that. don't, but, I mean, I can, I can but if he wants to, uh, I have no problem with it. Yeah, I mean, it was land divisions that normally what you do because there is no hearing involved, but, but I, can, I can just explain. With the understanding, this is not a hearing. Right. Okay. Um, so the concept, the way a major land division works is when they're going to create five or more parcels, whether they're lots or what are called site condominium units. Um, and it, they come to you to have a conceptual review in case there's anything you know major or significant that you might want to have them change before they go spend all their money on all the surveying plans and everything else and engineering plans. And then it'll come back to you for a preliminary review. But basically, Rick has gone through this with the surveyor and the applicant and determined that everything meets um, the land division ordinance and the zoning ordinance. And it fits? It's not a public hearing at any point. Um, it's just... You know, again, you're, you're taking a look at the concept now, so if there's questions that you want to ask of the applicant, if there was something you were concerned about with, I don't know what, road layout or something like that, you could But you could it fits. There's no need for right. conditions yes. to it's our, it? No, it's, it's zoned to allow for the size and width of lots um, that they're asking for. And like I said, Rick has gone through the, the initial conceptual application and determined that well, it's that being price. said, if it fits, there's, why is this just an FYI for us that, that it's going on, or why are we the, even discussing it? I guess the major land question. divisions, at least since the early 90s, I think, mid, maybe mid-90s, have come to the committee for review. They're not ever public hearings, but it's, you know, it comes to you for I review. I think we did one not too long ago we had for Gardner. That, yep. Um, we had one in Gardner, and then we had another one in Bailey's Harbor, and those are the only two I can think of for the last like, <coughs> really almost 10 years. Um, time. It is kind of growth. Um, some places do public hearings, but since what they're proposing to do is what's allowed by the zoning ordinance as far as the lot size and width, we've never done it that way. So then can we, yeah, I don't mean to keep interrupting you, but... No, it's okay. I, can we offer suggestions? You can. The like, yeah, the but only we can't say, here's what you have to do. No. Because I mean, it's already it, spelled yeah, out. Yeah, in the ordinance. I mean, there are some things, like, so the one that came recently, you know, I can't remember if it was the Gardner one or the Bailey's Harbor one, there are some things that they can ask for waivers from for certain requirements. I don't think that that's being requested. They can with do that without a hearing? Yeah. Because um, it's a different process. It's a completely different ordinance than the zoning ordinance. And this also ties back to the state's major land use regulations, right? Right. Yeah, so the reason we do... Is that anything over four, or over four lots, it, five acres yeah, in... The state less becomes that rule right, right? So the, yeah, the, state, the state has kind of overlapping or similar yeah. rules and the the way the zoning ordinance for probably at least almost 15 years now has had a conceptual review level that used to be optional but then sometimes when people came here for the preliminary review the committee wished that they had seen it earlier for some reason or whatever so now we've just gone ahead and made the conceptual review mandatory um, the only thing that I can think of in the last 12, 13 years, um, there was one major land division, I believe actually on Bayshore Drive, where the Resource Planning Committee at the conceptual review level um, asked that they move the way the road was going to come out on to Bayshore Drive, the internal road, but that's the only major change I can think of that you've asked for in, in previous, um, and that one was years ago. But the applicants here. Okay, so I got two questions for you. Okay. One of them is why is the utilities highlighted? What page are you on? Um, 125, I believe. Right below that. 
Oh, I'm sorry, you'll have to go down a few more pages. I don't know. I started at 125. Right there. Yeah, <coughs> uh, I'm not sure why you highlighted that. And then one of my questions relative to it. Or no, wait, I, that's in the condominium declaration. Right, it is, is exactly, yeah. yes. Mm. Oh, they might be just trying to point out that they are. Because that's related to the typical owner has to pay things, you know. Right. Yeah, and I guess the only thing I then questioned on of because it was highlighted, I decided to read it um, <laughs> or pay it more attention to it. I guess is what I would say. And if the applicant can shed some light on this, I'd be more than happy to have him come up and sit with us. Um, the what I was intrigued at was to say there should be no joint or, or shared wells. When I know that's a contentious issue as ownership changes through the years. Um, and I'm going to guess that we don't allow a joint septic system simply because the count the state doesn't or what? Because it doesn't say anything there that you can't have would. a joint septic. Yeah, we would allow that. It's we would. The, but in the condominium declaration, they can put whatever restriction restrictions on there they want to. But if you want to ask why, because uh, because classically I've experienced joint well issues, right? and, and maybe that's why maybe they figured that'll cut down on the squabbles between. Right, them. and and you know joint septic systems. If you've got a pumping a pump, you know involved, well now you got it's the same issue. It's the maintenance issue and the payment of the electric bill for it. And if the chairman doesn't mind uh, the applicant explaining that, if that matters. Sure, here or up there? Uh, you Come, on up. Come on up. Okay, These well, chairs are more comfortable. Fine, yeah, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> Vice Chair. Thank you. <laughs> I asked you. It's hard to keep you two separate. Uh, you Tom never know Birmingham, who's in charge. 3860 <laughs> County Highway up Fish Creek. Um, the reason that that is highlighted is because Rick Brower, um, I don't think I was the one to highlight. Rick sent me uh, two things he needed before this uh, review could be scheduled. And one was covered by uh, the surveyor, Brian Frisk, and the other had to do with uh, the utilities. One, one had to do with uh, uh, culverts, and Brian responded to that. There's one culvert required at the road where the common road meets Cottage Row Road. And uh, then I, he told me to respond to utilities. So I responded by sending the condominium language that the wells would all be individual as well as the sewer. Oh, so that was somewhere along the operation requirements. So, and if I can interject. Yeah. Um, so Rick has a note here when he was reviewing it as part of the land division review. Must show utilities and the utility easements including sewer, water mains, power transmission lines, and underground utilities. Um, and then need comments concerning provisions for water supply and sewer disposal. So those are his notes okay. reviewing. And that it. resolves the something. issues that Rick had. Yep, okay. so that was probably one of the things he needed before, <coughs> like you said. It, it was in response. Okay. That, now that makes more sense. And then I have one more question yeah. about the, don't we have a maximum distance in for cul-de-sacs? I thought we did. And, and I'm wondering if this has been satisfied. I'm, I'm assuming Rick's looked that over and confirmed that that's been approved. There is usually a, a thousand. Oh, let me look here. I'm looking at Rick's review notes. Uh, review at the land. Has determined conceptual sketch plan is completed. It will schedule a review. The declarant or agent on behalf of the declarant shall present a sketch. Da, da, da. And then he has a note here, will need committee approval for a cul-de-sac that exceeds 1,000 feet in length. So he does need that at a paper. And I'm trying to remember, I think you've been doing that at the preliminary plat. Level, I guess, although it makes some sense now if you think you're going to have an objection to it to let him know because otherwise he's going to go off and spend a lot more money on surveying and everything else. I, I Has no the uh, fire department uh, gone over this and this is the way the cul-de-sac is set up? That's wide enough for all their equipment they can turn around? And right. Yeah, I mean, it's been yeah, a 66 foot easement. If I may, sure. Uh, to meet the town road requirements for which the permit has not been applied for yet, but uh, the road surface will be uh, 20 feet uh, throughout, and our original, uh, the original 
plan, which Brian brought to Rick, the road exceeded a thousand feet, and so that was brought to my attention. And I said, "Well, I don't want to go in for any exception, so this is just at or under a thousand feet." Right. So this this is, to my understanding, within the restrictive not to exceed a thousand feet. So maybe that explains the odd lot lines on the back there. I was that's trying to right. figure that out. Oh, like, okay. That's yeah. why they were fanned. <laughs> at to, the an, end. to answer your question though, Ken, like when, so the land division ordinance does include road standards as far as easement right. width, paving width, and all that kind of thing. And when it, the newest iteration of the ordinance was adopted, I think we checked with all the local fire chiefs and the EMS and everything else to verify like cul-de-sac size and everything else. And so all those requirements are built right in. Into this. Into the oh, ordinance. So that has been yeah. addressed. Okay. Yeah, I actually do have one more question. Go ahead. Um, Why did I tell this? In my other part of my world, um, I have been interacting on quite a few subdivision developments and the naming of roads. And um, they're very, because this road doesn't exist yet, right? Not yet. Okay. No. So, yeah, and the fire department and emergency services didn't have a name with the road name being identical, basically, Cottage Road to Cottage Lane. That actually goes through our office, and I don't know whether Chris Moe has looked at it or not. Okay. Because you know? I know the two counties I work with, they do not like consistent I, names like that. Yeah. Yes. I, I should know the exact process, but I mean, usually either, yeah, the property owner or the town will suggest a road name and then we look at it to make sure that it's not too similar. So there that are will be lots, looked at, yet. yeah. Okay. There's I lots of it, them in Door County that say, do it's not, not fit in any good rules. Door County <laughs> for them to have. Yes. Um, I, I've had, through the years, I've had several subdivisions where the county has kicked them back and said, no, you must change yeah. the names because there's a similar road name in another part of the county. We'd have no problem so, with that. I guess I just want yeah, to make I mean, sure they, aware of If it. you want that to be something, obviously, that they look into before they move forward, we can have Chris Mo look at the, the, well, work, the it addressing. It should, it should follow through the normal county procedures. Mm -hmm. Right, of course. But that cottage lane, that, that's not a town road. That, that's, just, that's private. That would be a private road. Yeah. Cottage would be road. similar to... Where's, Oh, and I go ahead and drive. Cutter goes along the bluff and then goes down below in Fish Creek. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, from yeah, like yeah, Race yeah. Cherry Hut. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't give you any know. context to where we were. We're in Gibraltar. <laughs> and then it extends out. You've got to get north of the big end. I've got to do one of these. player road to uh, whatever that road is in the back there. <coughs> That's where it That's starts. Yeah. yeah. It's um, probably similar to uh, Glidden Drive, and then there's a Glidden Lane, right. yeah. and that's private. That the, the county doesn't follow it. It's yeah. the residents get it yeah. done. Right. Any the, other question? I do. I just have a question: If like any stormwater management is required, and then would we want to see like just an area where it would be put if it's required? I just yeah, because it's pretty full. Of, but at least on this drawing, maybe the boundaries of the property go beyond this drawing. Just see. Do they, or is this um, the property lines on the edges? So stormwater would be required, I believe, as part of the major land division process. Have you started talking to soil and water already? Or I only know that Brian Frisk uh, advised that that it wouldn't be oh. uh, come into play because of the uh, topography of the land. Okay. It's very flat there. Okay. Uh, it goes uphill over on the very well, about halfway down, vertically through units seven and eight, and halfway through nine and ten, there's a, a hill that comes down there. But certainly, if there are uh, stormwater plans required, that will be okay. dealt you, with. Definitely. Right, guys, we make sure there's room there's for it because sometimes right. when it's required, if there's not room. <laughs> sets aside yeah. for it, yeah. then you get stuck having to move everything around. So that's right. what I want yeah. to just ask. Yeah, we will yeah. obviously make sure. Yeah. The lots, in general, the, the lots okay. fronting uh, uh, Gibraltar Bluff Road are all 190 to 227 front feet. And fronting Cottage Road, there's only two lots that front that, each averaging four and a quarter, 425 square. Lineal feet, excuse me. Um, 
what you see there in the dash lines in all those units, those are the buildable areas. And that's set forth in the declaration so that there's 40 foot of offset from buildable area to lot line. So there's going to be a minimum of 80 feet between houses. And the shaded areas are the areas, only areas that driveways can come off of that road. But that's a condominium matter. It's we're trying to restrict development within the condominium. We can yeah, we'll check on the monster water piece. Yeah, you say you, 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 you yeah, can check yeah. Okay. There's storm water. Typically um, for major planned divisions including site condominiums. Stormwater control plans, as approved by Joe County SWCD, shall be presented at the time of preliminary plat submittal. Door County Conservation shall notify the subdivider in writing of the decision to approve or deny the submitted plan. Nobody can hear you. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I can. Oh, okay. well, I'm having trouble hearing. Okay, so. Oh. A plan, it says the plan shall be presented at time of preliminary plat submittal. Okay. So maybe Brian meant that you didn't need to do anything yet, I guess. So we'll have to look that at That could yeah. be. And I think often in recent years what Soil and Water has been doing is requiring just like a rain garden on each lot rather than having like one big giant thing somewhere that people have to worry about or maintain collectively. There's another paragraph if you want me to read that with regard to the stormwater. Okay. It says, if required by the county, a stormwater runoff control easement shall be prepared by the applicant and approved by the SWCD and our department, excuse me, SWCD and Land Use Services Department and Door County Court Council after the RPC gives preliminary plat approval and but before the Door County Land Use Services Department approves and signs the final plat. The applicant shall record that easement at the deeds office, shall include covenants, terms, conditions, restrictions to ensure proper installation, long-term operation and maintenance of that plan. That's very similar to what we've done on the shore in those couple of houses the last couple of years, right? Mm -hmm. well, yeah, so I think it's just, there's lots of different ways that those can look and lots of different surface areas they can take up. So just mm -hmm. before the final lines are drawn in there. I don't know. It's easier to take that to this stage than once it's developed further. So I um, don't object at all to that. I just would submit that the individual lots would be subject to, I'm not wishing to escape for any work here. Mm -hmm. I'll do it. Yeah. But that the end De would depend on where the houses are going on each individual yeah. lot and what the drainage plan is for each property within the condominium versus a master drainage mm -hmm. plan would be uh, pretty nebulous, I believe, uh, because it's, it's not just one uh, unit development within the condominium. Right whereby we're able to have a master drainage around that unit development. This is 12 <coughs> units, so. I think that's why they've been moving more to the rain garden per property, because then they can design it in conjunction with the development of the house and landscaping. And mm -hmm. I know like they calculate in all the impervious surface, so like the private road going in, all gets into the calculation, but it's just something to follow up yeah. with soil and water. So and you're not surprised with the size or what you need. Yeah. yeah. Before any final approval, that will all be put into place. Yeah. So the, the next step after the conceptual review is the preliminary plat review, and then that's the last time that it comes to you because at that point they have to have everything. Okay. They've got to have all the engineering plans, all the whatever they need from soil and water. Maybe the if the condominium documents aren't finalized, um, the actual plat and all the um, list of who's going to have to sign off on it and everything else. So that's all done. Okay, so we don't do anything here with that. You can we just you acknowledge that or you we just acknowledge that it's being presented to us and that's it. I 
do have one last question for you mm -hmm. because I did not review this and I'm reading under the utilities easement. It says for major land divisions, lots and units shall be served by underground electric, gas, telephone, and cable television lines if available unless waived by the committee. Uh, land disturbed by installing the underground line shall be stabilized by sub the subdivider or de declarant. So I just wanted to the, see all if the, uh, everything would be All the utilities them. will be buried. Okay. And the application's already into public service. Excellent. Yep, and they're requiring, before they do an installation, that they uh, are granted easements where they need easements. It'll be going in along the road. Sure. But so that they're granted a service easement <coughs> forever and ever. Uh, so that's also in the works. Okay, thank you. Any other questions, Biz? Yeah, Mr. Birmingham, that quote, the uplands at Cottage Row, unquote, is that like the name of the project? That's the name of the project. So there'd probably be a sign out in front or something saying that on Cottage Lane? Uh, our intent is not to have a sign, but just a gate at the road oh. um, and a common mailbox inside that gate. Okay, and I see this whole project is kind of down at the end of Cottage Row where, where it, it comes to Gibraltar Bluff Road. Yes, it's at yeah, the it's northeast corner of Gibraltar Bluff Road and Cottage Row Road. Up on top, above Hairpin Curve. Mm -hmm. See, I know where that is. Now what I do know. <laughs> they, they, that road is closed in the winter, huh? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Because of the hairpin and the... Yeah. yeah it would be very difficult for the plows to do it. Mm -hmm. Adjust the portion that's hairpin. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? So, do you need any motion, Mariah? Um, you may as well. I mean, just acknowledge that you've reviewed it. You don't have any major things that you want to see changed. Do you want us to check on the road naming and make sure that the stormwater piece is dealt with? Would you like to make a motion? Well, I'll make a motion that we acknowledge the the project and we'll let it move forward with the conditions that the planning department makes sure all the contingent items we discussed are in the plan. Okay, is there a For second? Final second. approval. Second by Dave. <coughs> Any questions on it? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Thank you. You bet. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Got a green light. Okay, so there's no need to go to eight to convene the closed session. Right, Grant's not here. So. No need to reconvene into open session. Correct. Well, I'd like to. Discussion. <laughs> <laughs> I've lost control of this. I morning. know. <laughs> <laughs> Regarding closed session subject, no. <clears throat> Potential sponsorship of text amendments to the Door County Comprehensive Zoning Ordinance, whereby Chapter 8 signs. Oh, that's part and parcel of it. You can skip all the way to 12. Nope. Yeah. Nope. Yeah. Future meeting schedule. So I talked to Ken about this a little bit beforehand. Since Grant couldn't be here, he really wants to have a meeting next week with you to deal with the stuff that we just had to skip. So I have a list of dates and times that work for me and for Grant um, because we do have potential legal action coming that we okay. need to deal with. Um, okay, so what, what are your dates? Week? So, so Mon yeah. yeah, 19th through the 20th. Monday, uh, third. Um, first finance on Monday. Well, well, let's just go through day by day in the time frames okay. that work, and you tell us what, hopefully we'll come up with at least one. So Monday, 8 to 11.30, or 2.30 no. to 4. Uh, finance is at 3. <laughs> Why not in the morning? Uh, no, I'm just saying I can't be here. Oh, I don't okay. care if you guys have it. Oh, okay. I can't be here Monday I or can't Tuesday. Be there oh, so. Monday or Tuesday. Okay. So Monday's out? Just, just Tuesday, Tuesday is right. admin. Uh, mu oh, museum is canceled, but there's three admin meetings, uh, uh, one after another, Tuesday morning, and then there's a photo op Tuesday afternoon. What's the, the photo op? Because yeah, Grant and I are free after that, when all of those meetings in the morning end until I, like I 6 o'clock. I believe that's the one with the... Uh, uh, the grant, the big grant that uh, Soil and Water is getting. Oh, it's for for, oh, that, for, you for mean your like the, Okay. Okay. At one thirty. Um, but 
I didn't know that. Right. So, where's your photo? It's op? not. It, it's a photo op only for, not to put anybody off, but special people. But people that wore purple shirts today. <laughs> it, it is for. It's okay. Uh, Dan Austin. They're going to present one of those big placard checks to us. So Dan, as chairman of uh, <coughs> facilities and parks, is going to be there. I, as chairman of LCC is going to be there and they mentioned Dave Lino also as chairman of the board because it's a pretty yeah. substantial check. So are we eliminating Tuesday or is there any time to, to later Tuesday? Well that's at one third. If, if my date is right that's uh, the 20th. Tuesday, two, you've got that down too. I don't oh, have that. Uh, I have Grant and I are available after those morning meetings are over until 6 30. So I, I am not but I'm fine if you no, meet one thirty. <laughs> it would have to be like as I understand it, the photo is supposed to be taken out at Penny Park at 1.30. So then you'd never, okay. But you're not available so, that I'm working day. Tuesday all day. I can't. Okay. So Let's who, who this. is available Tuesday? It would have to be like maybe 2.30 or 3. Yeah, for me it probably wouldn't work out only because if I'm going to be here for the morning, I'm going to likely have to be in Ledgeview for the afternoon. On Tuesday? Yeah. Okay, well then move on right, to Wednesday. let's move on to Wednesday. Wednesday we are both free between 8 and 4. I'm free all day. I'm free in the afternoon. I'm free. I'm not available for the first half of the day. But could you do the so afternoon? I could, I could do an evening meeting. You said you could do it in the after afternoon. Evening or afternoon? I can probably do it after. That's our typical. Oh, you're not even going to be here, right? No. Wait. You can't do it in the afternoon? I can't do it in the afternoon. I got Lake Shore Camp. Okay. What about Thursday? Um, Thursday, we could do between 8 and 11. We have risk management in the morning? Or between 2 no, and 4. No, we don't anymore. Right. No, nope, oh. that's in October now. Oh, you over. didn't get the call? No. Oh. My computer's up and down, so. That's right, so you're I, chair. So, I so Thursday, you Thursday guys the go. Thursday the 22nd. You're just, you know, you're on that flight, that thing out to Washington, aren't you? Uh, that's not until in September. Oh, okay. <clears throat> no, then Thursday. Thurs Thursday's, Thursday's not good for me. I got I got rehab at 10 in the morning, and, and I, yeah, my afternoon is busy, too. But Friday, I'm open all day. Who, who can make it Friday? I can do the Grant and I are both available 8 to 5 on Friday, the 23rd. I can't do it in the morning. Again, I'm, in, I'm mandatory to be somewhere else in the morning. So I could probably do it in the afternoon. John? I'm okay. All day? And if you want to put me here all day? <laughs> well, and I should say, we, we're thinking this is only going to take about an hour and a half. We're not right. talking like we're going to yeah. be. Okay. Uh, you want to do like three o'clock on Friday? Or I understand it? your thought, your commitment. Well, no, no, no. I'm not. But, I'm not pushing the issue. Yeah, but uh, to split my Friday up for a one half hour meeting, I'd rather one do it in the morning and get it done. So I've got the whole rest of the data. We really would like to have all five of you here. Well, if then so possible. much for that. So. <laughs> what time can you make it here on Friday? Yeah. Um, until Friday morning, or well, probably Thursday night. I don't have a guarantee. No, Friday. but I, I uh, have to be Friday. I have to be in town um, uh, through ten o'clock in in Ledger. Um On Friday. On Friday. Friday the twenty third. So one o'clock, two o'clock. So I can meet. You know, I I if it means I drive back to town, then I do. It is what it is. I don't have anything down there, and I don't. What's the twenty fourth and twenty fifth? I know classically we don't like Friday. Friday. Saturday. 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 I, I know, but I'm looking at. <laughs> Like, I didn't, like, we didn't talk about Saturday and Sunday. I, no, no. <laughs> I, I mean, for me, for planning what, uh, what's going on the next week. No, that's not till the 31st. Okay, so I don't have anything scheduled for that weekend. Well, you know what? Friday afternoon will work. <laughs> Just what little, time? Well, the so light bulb went off that free because I don't have anything Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday, so. Yeah, that so would fine. I, I lost track of what time you said. Two o'clock? Well, three o'clock? I mean, three three o'clock is, is always my preference. All right, so okay. But Friday. if you need to move it forward to that, I will do no, my best. Friday, to Friday at three o'clock. All right, that so doesn't interfere with you. Nope. Okay. okay. Do it. So we're going to meet 823 Circle that one. at three o'clock, and that's going to be just for the closed session piece that we just skipped okay. and the discussion about a new sign chair. RPC, 3 p.m. John, that works for you? Yep, on the 23rd. Um, yep, okay, Friday, August 23rd at 3 o'clock. Okay, now that we figured out that, I think Sue and I figured out that we do not need to have a September 5th meeting. Yeah, well, I won't be here anyways. Oh. Well, 
I might be able to, but oh. I doubt it. We don't have it. I'm out of state. I'm sorry. No, oh, no, no, no. I'm laughing airport. because when, when we I mean, try no, to we schedule. We can let you know for sure next week. Again. I always talk about how busy I am, and I always give the, the caveat. Now, I know everybody, everybody's busy. Everybody's busy. I'm just not the only one. Excellent. But it's comical. That's I'm laughing because we try to schedule the meeting, and we've all got things going on. None of us are home twiddling our thumbs. Yeah, but at the last meeting, I did say not be around on the 5th. So, fifth, right. so, but we're likely, not likely no meeting on the fifth. Okay. Yeah, no David. And the 19th is budget review, so that we'll one. We'll have that one. Yeah. Okay, so let me go there. September. I don't know if we'll have any hearings, but we'll certainly have a meeting. September 19th. Finance is at 3. On which day? On, on Monday the 19th. Monday. Monday's oh, September the 19th. Oh, we're Thursday. a month, yeah. We're, in, we're, 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 we're talking September. September. We're talking September. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, we've got to figure out. So the next meeting is going to be. Next Friday, at three. August 23rd at 3 o'clock. And then we're probably not going to have a meeting on September 5th, but we'll let you know next week. And then we will have a meeting on September 19th. Okay, okay. at 3 p.m. At yeah, 3 on the 19th? On yep. the 19th. Of September, okay. And just so you know, the rezonings that you talked about today will not be going to county board until next month. Okay. Until September. Just, just yep. so you know. Okay. All right. Yeah, but you do have the... Text men. The text amendments are going. Does the does both the one does the one we denied also go to county board? It does yes. need okay. to go to county yeah, board, but it won't yeah. ask. Yeah, it'll okay. just be a report saying you denied it and for what So reasons. then, okay. on the for your recommending the day we decided uh, uh, Friday the twenty third, Friday the twenty third. That's next week. Uh, that's 3 p.m. and that will be to convene a closed session and do basically 8 through 12. Yep. Uh, 8 through 11. 8 through 11. Yep. Okay, that's fine. Yep. Uh, if there's nothing, oh, meeting per diem code, uh, 333. Motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 We are adjourned. Two hours. <coughs> Bless you.